I'm watching that timer really close because I've been told I can't introduce myself in 18 minutes. And so to do a TED talk, it's going to be a challenge, but hang on. I need some audience participation. How many of you saw the movie uh, Yes Man with Jim Carrey? Show of hands, show of hands. Eh, no, not even half. Um, I'm not going to say I endorse the movie by any stretch of the imagination, but I really like the theme of it. Uh, Jim Carrey's character, Carl, had given up on life. He was, uh, he was not having any joy and fulfillment in his life, and, and it was really going nowhere fast. And he got convinced to say yes to everything. He kind of went to a self-help conference, and uh, he kind of got convinced to say yes to everything. And you can imagine with Jim Carrey what that led to is pretty ridiculous things. But a lot of the things he said yes to were things he really wanted, things he really wanted to do. Um, and that's really the message of that movie. You know, when I think back to it, it was just, just say yes. But you got to say yes to the things that are in your heart, not just everything. And you got to think those things through, because do you really want it? And do you really know what it's going to cost? And so, you know, the, the concept of uh, what I'm going to talk about a little bit later, some of the adventures I've gotten into, you know, I started this really early in my life at age 14. I got involved in athletics, and, and I really took it wholeheartedly because Carl in the movie was looking for joy and fulfillment. And what I found through participating in athletics and especially endurance, running, and that sort of thing was I enjoyed enjoyment and fulfillment. And, and so, you know, people would always ask me, why do you do these things? At age 15, I wasn't very good, but I loved to run. And I lived 14 miles from my high school. And you know what I did, don't you? Yeah, I ran home one day. And it spread through the school. That, that nutty Mike, who's always out running, ran home all the way to his house. And, you know, and people would go, are you crazy or what's wrong with you? And I, and I was so excited. I remember I got home and I snuck in the house because my mother was home. And I went down and took a shower. And she heard the shower come on. And she looked and she knew. And she goes, she yelled down the stairs, Mike, did you run home? And I just giggled. With, with just fulfillment and joy that I'd pull this thing off. And, you know, this challenge by choice, it was my decision to do that. Nobody you know, told me to do it or encouraged me to do it. But it was just something in my heart that I wanted to pursue. The uh, concept of a balanced life has been around for a long time. Um, you go back to Greek philosophy and you'll see this. Uh, the late Dr. George Sheehan, a philosopher and writer, if you read any of his material, speaks a lot to this concept of, of the whole man, the whole person, um, balanced, living the fulfilled life. Um, Dr. Sheehan believed it started with the body, that we really want to work on developing our, our physical bodies. We are challenged by life um, in many ways, um, and we can only do what we can do. But his thought was, you know, when you, when you work on the body, how that affects the mind and the spirit, and how those follow along. Um, as a medical professional, I work with cardiac rehab patients. I'm a core, an exercise physiologist, and I work with people with heart disease. And I share this concept with them, because they're, we focus on their body. They're really struggling with their health. And I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up exercise as medicine. Um, and these are just a few of the benefits. I couldn't get the, you know, these are the ones that could fit on the slide. And I'm not going to take the time because my timer's running. Down arrows mean they get, it goes down. The up arrows mean it gets better. And those are all positive, positive things. If anybody ever wants a slide, you send me an email. I'll be happy to share this with you. Um, because this is an important message in our society. Our healthcare system is, as you all know, is in, in, in some really interesting situations right now. And not only just healthcare, but our whole culture and the way, um, how, how people react and are acting. And I really believe that, you know, by going back to the body and focusing on, on ourselves, turning inward in that way, will help us to be able to do more in the outward direction. Um, you know, the balanced life, if you, if you focus on the body, you know, how can that help my mind? Um, people ask me all the time when I'm out, when I was a runner, I'd run marathons and I was like, what do you think about? Now I'm a cyclist. I can go a lot farther on a bike than I can run. I have more time to, to contemplate to process information, to think, um, to pray, to, uh, to organize my thoughts, to make plans. You know, how many people have that opportunity in their life? They're so busy. I don't have time to you know, make a grocery list up. Oh, trust me, I can make a grocery list up. And I have a, a, a to-do list. I've got plenty of time. You know, in this, in this, this mental, intellectual thing that we have, I need a lot of time sometimes to process information, to become informed. You know, the spiritual side of my life, my attitude, my character, my determination, 
you know, I really find that athletics and, and again, working with the body has helped to dis discipline that as well. Um, enjoyment, you know, fulfillment. Where does that come from? Is that a, you know, it's, it's, it's a combination of all three of those things. My journey so far, you know, it's, we're just on this course and we get one shot. And I always think of the, my life is based on movies, by the way. Um, Groundhog Day, Bill Murray, favorite one. Anybody show of hands who saw Groundhog Day? All right, much better response. Um, one of my favorite movies, because you know why? He got to get it, he got to do it over and over until he got it right. He finally, eventually, at the end of the show, got it right. And his life proceeded on the way I guess it was supposed to. We've got this one shot, and so we've got to get it right, pretty much right from the get-go. The good news is we can start anytime we want on this journey. We're all on it right now. Um, this is the home movie part, you know, when you go over to people's houses and they say, well, let's bring out some home movies, and people either, oh, i got to watch their home movie. I'll try to make this as painless as I can. You know, I mentioned in 1971, I was 14 years old, and a friend said, let's go out for track. I was a farm kid, one, one room schoolhouse, uh, got shipped off to Lennox High School. I went from a class of one, I was the only seventh grader in my country school, a uh, school of 13. I went to a class of about 140 down at Lennox, and, and it was really kind of an exciting time, but I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to, to be loved. And when somebody said, hey, let's do this, they invited me to participate, I said, yes. Because in my heart, I thought this is something that might be good. And so I went out for track, and I was so fortunate I have teammates and coaches who were encouraging that no matter what you did, as long as you tried your best, they seemed to appreciate it. Ah, you know, they had, we had fun, I had a sense of joy, and I kind of got some fulfillment out of it. I was terrible. I really wasn't very good. I set a goal to get a letterman's jacket. I wanted a letter. That's big for a boy and girl in high school. I want to be recognized for my abilities. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. I wasn't very good. Um, I saw that there was going to be a running camp. Believe it or not, they had running camps in 1972 up at South Dakota State University. And I asked my parents, could I go to this camp? My folks didn't understand this running stuff, but they were supportive. And they said, you bet. It cost $90 for a week. Did I mention 1972? All right. And, and they sent me up there. And for a week, I hung out with a bunch of other guys, one girl, Jane Whiff from Freeman. And uh, we just hung out and ran and learned about running. And, and had the greatest time. We had coaches there, really good coaches from around the state of South Dakota. And we ran and ran and ran. The last day was a race. I think I finished last. Jane Whiff kicked my butt. She just whooped me up one side, down the other. And you know what? I kind of, my, my pride was dented. But when we finished, everybody high-fived you. Everybody was pats on the backs. Nice job. Way to go. Good work. You know, it was a sense of fulfillment, sense of joy. I couldn't wait to get back to high school. And guess what? Sophomore year, lettered. Lettered in cross country, lettered in track. And I kind of got this idea, you know, I learned this camp, and I learned from my coaches, you work hard, you, you be determined, things, you'll get better. Went back to the running camp between my sophomore and junior year. I should mention, sophomore year, I got 54th at the state cross country meet. That's okay, hold it down, hold it down. <laughs> but I knew, I thought, wow, 53 guys whoop my butt out there. I'm going to try to do better next year. So I went back to the running camp, trained harder, came back my junior year, letter, got my letter, finished 20th at the state cross country meet. I should mention the top 15 get medals. I had set a goal to get a medal my junior year. I wanted a medal. I didn't make it. You know, even though in my heart I had, you know, I made a, the decision to challenge myself with, with running and, and set a goal to, uh, to make the team, which I did, and get a letter, and I did, and to finish in the top 15, it doesn't always work out the way we plan. It just doesn't. But you know what? I gave up my best shot. I, I still had fun trying. And I felt fulfilled in my effort. You know, that's when you finish the race and the coach said, well, did you give it all you had? And you say, and he can tell. They know what you do. And you stagger across the finish line and they say, you did, a, you did a good job. You did the best you could on this day. You have nothing to be, don't hang your head. And uh, that just fueled my fire even more. So I set the goal next year. You know, I want to do even better. And guess what? Number one. Yeah, I still get emotional. Because uh, it was one of the few times my dad ever shook my hand. I was, yeah, he was at the finish line, shook my hand, and I finished. My dad was a World War II vet, plumber, smoked, rolled his own. He's a tough guy, not one to show emotions. Trust me, a handshake meant a, a lot to a teenage boy at that point. Got a scholarship to go up to SDSU, of course. 
after I went to those running camps, where else was I going to go? And I got thrown in with a bunch of guys that were just like me. We all had goals and aspirations. We all wanted to be better. Started running. Uh, we set goals, national championships. Never made it. We finished second two years in a row, my junior and senior year. Disappointed? You bet. Do we give it our best? You bet. You know, we had a lot of fun, a lot of joy, a lot of fulfillment. Doesn't always work out the way you want, but you know what? You give it your best shot. I wasn't done. I got out of college. This is 1979, 1980, and the running boom was at full crest. I hit the marathon circuit. And the more marathons I ran, the better I got. I just loved it. Qualified for two Olympic trials, ran a 218 marathon, got, I got sponsored by the Brooks Shoe Company. I'm not telling you this to brag. Remember back in 1971, what did I want? I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be part of a team. I wanted the guys to like me. But you never know when you say yes to something early on, what it's going to lead to down the road. Kept running. I just was a, you know, I was a runner. Unfortunately, in 1991, something changed. I got hurt. Four knee surgeries now on my left knee. I can't run. And I kind of had a little uh, period there for a, a month or two where I was kind of wondering what's going on. You know, I wasn't feeling joy and fulfillment. And I had a friend who said, come bike with me. He was a triathlete. We ran together. He also biked. I never understood that biking. You get flat tires, greasy chain. It looks like a hassle. But I really didn't have a lot of choices in 1991. I got a bike, started riding, and guess what? The joy and fulfillment came right back. I've never gotten off the bike yet, 20 years. And so from 1991 to 2007, normal cycling. I got into road races and century rides. You all know what a century ride is? 100 milers. Yeah, that's kind of the, the marathon for cycling, is to do a 100-mile ride. We were doing them. Then in 2007, a big change. I got to the age of 50. And I call it my midlife crisis. You know, when you hit 50, it's all at once you realize, I think I'm closer to the end than I am to the beginning. And you start wondering about things like that. And uh, the thought popped into my head, you know, testing the limits. And I heard about this race in South Dakota called the Gut Check. Yeah, I blame Jay Trobeck. Hello, you can tell Jay this too. I go to church with him. He, every day, he'd put up the weather to stay to South Dakota, one end to the other, 412 miles. I wonder if I could ride that far in one day. And a kid put on a race in 2006. Four people started, one finished. I wasn't in it. I didn't know about it. The next year, a friend of mine, Phil, who some of you know, we did a two-man relay. Phil ran, rode to Gettysburg, which is almost right in the middle there of the state. And then I took off and went to the, to the border. Because of road construction, I rode 215 miles in a little over 13 hours into a headwind. And I loved it. I was hammered, man. I was tired, but joy and fulfillment, big time. Next year, I came back, did the whole thing all by myself, 22 hours and 45 minutes. Yay. <laughs> anyway, you go, wait a minute, 22 hours, when did you sleep? Oh, no, there ain't no sleeping. This is a race. And so you ride, and you ride, and you ride. You eat, and you drink, and you get off the bike to do certain things once in a while, but you really want to get from point A to point B as fast as you can. So after doing that, I got this other crazy idea. Oh, there's a race across the United States. Well, let's go for that. Now, wait a minute. Remember back in the beginning, I said, when you got something and it's in your heart, you got to think this through. Know what you're getting involved with, and do you really want to do it? And I did. So I learned about the race across America, and one of the things you have to do is qualify. My race across South Dakota doesn't count. It's not a certified race. It's just something we do for fun. I went to a certified race, Port Byron, Illinois, 24 hours. They have 24-hour bike races. You ride for 24 hours, a 70-mile loop, and then when it gets dark, a 20-mile loop. And they keep track. I had to ride 400 miles in 24 hours, 422. So I qualified for the race across America. So last summer, I attempted it. I don't have my laser pointer, but I made it to, let's try to get my finger here, just about to this peak here. I made it about 750 miles, and I had to stop. I was a, a DNF. A 30 rider started, 16 dropped out. I was one of them. I got dehydrated, got in trouble with my nutrition. Do I have to explain what happens to you when you ride a bike for 700, 800 miles, pretty much nonstop? Certain parts of your body. Well, anyway, we won't get into that. But I had to stop. I was very disappointed. But did I give it my best? I did. I really felt fulfilled in that I gave it my best shot. Did we learn a lot? Oh, yeah. So, came back two months later, August of last year. I thought, you know what? They have a new division of the gut check. It's called a Helen back. What do you think that means? Yeah. We started on this side over there where the B is, and we rode to A, and then we turned around and rode back to B. 824 miles, 65 hours and 34 minutes. Got her done, because I learned a lot from the race across America. So, I gotta go back. And we're gonna go back here. I leave Sunday, 
Race starts Wednesday. We're going to do race across the West. Oceanside, California, right down here. Durango, Colorado, up in the right-hand corner. It's 860 miles, and they have a race called Race Across the West. And I'm entered. We're going to give it our best shot. We're going to go back, take what we learned last year, and apply it to this year. And if I had to show you on the Race Across the West, it's 860 miles, so it's Durango, Colorado, somewhere here. After we do this year's race, we're going to make a decision. Because you really got to do it. You got to make it. It's got to be in your heart. You got to know what you're getting involved with here. Do I go back and try the race across America one more time? What do you think? We'll see. We'll see. I told my wife, one race at a time. One race at a time. I'm going to finish with this. I found this. You know, when I got home from Race Across America last year, you can imagine I was disappointed in myself. But, you know, you do the best you can. You take what you get. And somebody sent me this. It must be born that tragedy in life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in not having no goal to reach. It isn't a calamity to die with your dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity not to dream. It's not a disaster to be unable to capture your ideal, but it is a disaster to have no ideal to capture. It is not a disgrace not to reach the stars, but it is a disgrace to have no stars to reach for. Not failure, but low aim is sin. And, you know, I can tell you that the young 14-year-old boy who wanted to be accepted and just said yes because he wanted to fit in would never have dreamt that he's riding his bike across states and across nations and meeting people and having all these great experiences. And what I want you to consider is, you know, in your heart, sometimes you know there's something you should be doing. You know there's a goal out there that you've thought about and you've thought through and you really know what it's going to take to get there. You know what I tell you, don't you? There you go. Have a great day.